Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing my thoughts on Season 1, Episode 3 of the Vampire Academy show on Peacock. Episode 3 is titled Death Watch, aka the episode where this starts to feel a little bit like The Handmaid's Tale. I can't be the only one who got Handmaid's Tale vibes from this episode. The way that they're choosing to handle the communes of damn fear women is very much giving me Handmaid's Tale vibes. It's interesting because in the books, at least based on book one, and I'll reiterate what I said in earlier videos, I have read book one of Vampire Academy, I have not continued with the series, and I read the spinoff series. But from what I know, the communes in the books with Damn Fear Women do not include this element of them being forced to procreate with vampires with no choice given as to whether they say yes or no if they are not guardians. In the books, some of them are blood whores, but it seems to be a choice for the purposes of survival financially, not something that the government is forcing them into doing. And so there's a lot of pretty horrific stuff as a result that we're seeing here with women being handpicked specifically to breed with other people. It's a lot, and it seems strange to me that the damn fears who are physically so strong and capable would just give in to this this way. I feel like we need a little more explanation as to why this is even allowed to continue. The way that the books had it set up based on what I read made a lot more sense to me than what they're doing here, but it makes me wonder if they're trying to sort of capitalize on the popularity of something like The Handmaid's Tale to just throw it in there. This is also the episode where I start having some questions about the costuming choices. It's a little strange, right? We have these damn fair women from the communes who look like they're dressing from the 1930s or 40s, and then we have vampire royalty <laughs> literally wearing ruffs, full Victorian suits, top hats, and then you contrast that with the damn fair guardians who are wearing, you know, sportswear and crop tops. I just feel like the costuming decisions in this show are kind of all over the place and a little bit bizarre. The first episode I was saying I was liking the costuming, I was liking a lot of the visuals, and I think for some of those party scenes early on I, I did feel that way, but the further we get into the show the more there are some things that I'm like, this just, this seems strange. Why, why would this be? It's such a strange mashup of time periods and looks, and it doesn't always make a ton of sense. Speaking of the damn fair women, this is where we start to really explore Rose's mommy issues. And again, this is different at least from what we see in the first book in the Vampire Academy series. I would be curious to know from those of you who have read the rest of the books whether this is a plot thread that shows up later on in the series, because I know they are mashing things from different books all into this season. That said, given the fact that damn fair women are basically forced into being breeders, being sexually enslaved, which is horrible, there are very limited options and there are no good options for damn fear women. And you would then understand why Rose's mom would choose to do what she did, which is be a guardian and let somebody else raise her child. Rose has zero compassion for this, which I have a hard time buying. Like, I understand that she is hurt and angry, and I hope that we get some kind of an arc where she can understand where her mom is coming from, and maybe it makes sense. She's 18, she's hurt, she feels abandoned, but I also feel like you could have some level of empathy for the situation your mother was in, even if you don't like the choices she made. There are no good choices for damn fair women, really, and being a guardian is kind of the best you're gonna get. In this episode, the politics is really getting amped up. There's a lot of stuff happening on the council. They're wanting to make a lot of sweeping changes that could be really harmful. And we get the introduction, or should I say reintroduction, for those who didn't catch it, of Tatiana. Now, this is what is really interesting to me, is if I'm not mistaken, Tatiana was also the woman who, in that first big set of party scenes in episode one, 
met Lissa's brother and then had sex with him in the coat closet. I, I know I talked about this in my review of episode one that, you know, seeing some of that gave us this hint of what we were going to get in later episodes. But what's interesting is that she met him that night. She introduced herself as Tatiana. And that was the night that the car accident happened and they all died, which makes me wonder if Tatiana is maybe somehow involved because now she is introducing herself to Lissa, saying she was a friend of her brother how good of a friend were you when you had like met him that one night right before they all died? She is clearly trying to make something happen for herself politically and I have a lot of questions about her past and her loyalties and what exactly she's up to. One other thing that stood out to me in this episode that I had noticed in previous episodes but I don't think I had said is I wasn't expecting some of the goriness of certain moments in this. They're so different from the rest of the show and I wasn't expecting it. Like there's this moment where Christian gets a jaw in a box and it's pretty grotesque and other moments where we've seen close-ups of these like dead bodies and it, I, I don't know what it is but it's weird to me. I'm like that doesn't feel like what this show is about. It feels like excessive gore for the vibe I'm getting from the show. So I just think it's an interesting choice to have some of those grosser elements introduced. I mean, it's fine, but it just feels a little strange to me. This is the episode where we find out that specializing in spirit is blasphemy, that it does exist, but it's something that's really been hidden over time. And, you know, there are maybe some other people who also specialized in spirit who have been hidden away. Again, I feel like we're really getting this push into things about female autonomy feels like what it is because it's mostly female characters. So we have the damn fear women, all the Handmaid's Tale type stuff going on there. On the other side, we've got the vampires who specialize in spirit, who are sort of sent away, God knows what they do to them, electric shock therapy maybe, I think is mentioned somewhere. And it's interesting because both of these things mirror different issues that have largely affected women at different points in history or in kind of the public ideas of dystopian futures. So there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot going on here. This episode, we're seeing a lot of Jesse Zeklos, who is such a creep. I kind of hate him. I feel like he's supposed to be one of those villains you love to hate. And as we'll talk about in the video for episode four, the show is trying to complicate his character a little bit. How effective it is remains to be seen, but he is a creep for sure. There is a moment that makes me wonder if he's the one controlling the psi hounds, these kind of big rabid dogs, where they kind of run at him and he's like, no, no, not me. I'm not the one you want. And we know that they respond to vampire commands. Is he the one who controlled the psi hounds and sent them to go and attack the priest or whatever? Is he in on it? There are other moments as well that make you wonder, is he on the side of the Strogoi? Is he kind of the plant on the inside? And I feel like that's what we're supposed to wonder. So a lot of questions about Jesse. Don't really like him very much, but I think he works pretty effectively as a villain that you're going to love to hate. The last thing I want to mention about this episode is we're seeing Rose and Dimitri start to get closer to each other. And I think that is going to continue with the show, you know, who's surprised. But there's a lot of these moments between them. They're building up tension. They're talking to each other more. They're spending more time together. So we are getting this slow burn development of what will eventually be a relationship. Again, it is a bit of an issue because we do have a power dynamic. While I really appreciate that the showrunners made the choice to have Rose be 18 instead of a minor because gross, that did not hold up well in the books. We do still have this power dynamic issue where he is older, he is in a position of power over her. And so that, you know, raises some questions about whether they are on an equal playing field when it comes to a romantic relationship. That said, this feels more like the kinds of questions we see in a lot of media, and so it's something I'm less deeply bothered by, and I like the fact that they chose to make some changes to the portrayal in the show. So how am I feeling about Vampire Academy at this point? I am continuing to enjoy it. There are some choices that I'm side-eyeing a little bit. However, I am the kind of person where a few strange decisions don't ruin something for me. I'm still having a pretty good time. I still think we're getting a lot of those sort of CW vibes. There is a lot going on. 
maybe a little too much. I think perhaps there are a few too many plot threads and machinations and things going on in this show to follow. But again, I'm enjoying it. It's just making me curious how much of this is drawing on plots from the book and how much of it is just being manufactured. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts. What did you think about episode three? Do you have any thoughts on the choices that they're making for the show? Are you enjoying it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, it helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.